What's up, duelists? As many of you know, today was the Deck Devastators tournament on the edisonformat.com Discord. It was an awesome event, 142 entrants. The TOs did a great job. The judges did a great job. It was a blast to be able to participate in my first very large Edison tournament since like 2010. It was so much fun. I honestly had a great time. I'm going to show you guys the four decks that I tested for this event, and I'm going to show you guys the replays from this event. This is a brief tournament report. Spoiler alert, it is a little bit short because I did not do so hot, which is, you know, hey, it's going to happen some of the time. This is one of the decks I tested. This is my current fairies list. I am trying out Cyber Valley plus main deck mind control. I think this change is very good. I think Cyber Valley helps turn on the return and the Dialks, and mind control shores up a lot of the deck's issues with Snowman Eater, Hamster, and Raiko. I really like this change to the deck. I'm on one Christia and one Soul of Purity and Light as of right now. In testing, uh, I found myself losing the games where I drew multiple Christia or losing the games where I drew multiple Soul. It wasn't so bad when I drew Soul and Christia together because they kind of have a synergy within themselves. Soul lets you sometimes tribute some of Christia or Christia sometimes lets you, you know, be amazing and win the game <laughs> if it's ever live, you know, like they're, they're fine together. Drawing the two together is not as bad as drawing two of the same one. Drawing multiple soul, it's very difficult to get them both live. And then drawing two Christia, the first one's going to be live. The second one's always going to be dead. So I, I cut down to one Christia. You really only need the one. You really only need the one of the soul. I, I might go back up to two soul. I'm not, I'm not sure, but drawing two of them was, was a little bit tough for me. It was a little bit tough. I am trying out a main deck dust tornado over a book of moon. I'm not sold on it. The only reason I have it right now is I've noticed a lot of people are fucking preying for me. A lot of people are fucking main decking DDV. A lot of people are main decking just hateful cards like Defissure right now. And you just need the extra Dust Tornado for those floodgates. It's really gross. I'm also trying out two main deck D-Prison. I'm not sold on these. I'm not sold on them. I, I think they're okay. It's like, whatever. It's it's fine. It's, it's, it's always going to be an okay card. It's never going to be that bad. It's never going to be that good. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. It clears a resolve threat can't really complain the sideboard i am trying out a few new things mm. i'm trying out siding the second soul and the second christia for deck dev basically when you get deck dev you just want more high impact cards to drop on your opponent when they go minus tempo sacrificing their big monster and then i'm also trying out these two banishers in my testing today before the before the tournament here i'll, I'll show you guys real quick uh in my testing i played a couple of games today before the tournament so you'll see a few spoilers but starting around here against Harold was the first game I played with fairies today and then I won eight straight and then I lost to Depone's Lord and the game I lost to Depone's Lord is a really interesting one he was playing zombies but he was playing zombies with like <clears throat> pardon me pardon me multiple pyramid turtle multiple giant rat lots of recruiters lots of like that type of game plan like where you just float your monsters card trooper that kind of stuff and playing against that made me realize a weakness to the fairy deck is it's not very good at removing a recruiter with tempo banisher lets you do that basically and banisher is also very good against x sabers which is a deck that can be tough can be tough it's not it's not the worst matchup because harold is insane and christy is insane but it's not the best matchup either. It can be a little bit awkward. They can put together some pretty big power plays with full Helm Knight against your your dude. So I think having the extra banishers is is good for the sideboard. I think I think this is the most recent inclusion. After going 8-1 today in matches with fairies, I think I do want to have the extra banishers on the side. I added them over a third crow and a second kaiku, which I was never bringing in anyway. I was only ever bringing in two crow and one kaiku because of the way the deck sideboards. So they're not even really in over cards that I would be siding differently. Uh, pretty much. I was going to play this in the event. I was a little bit afraid of pre, and then I also had been playing this deck a ton, and it just didn't sound like the most fun thing to me in the moment. It's kind of hard to describe, but I don't really like playing this game when I'm not having fun, <laughs> if that makes sense. I mean, that's the same for... That's kind of such a stupid thing to say, but if I'm not having fun playing the deck I'm playing, the deck... or the, not the deck, the game feels kind of like a chore. And I've been grinding with Fairy for so long that at the point playing with it, at this point, playing with it feels kind of like a chore. It doesn't feel like fun. I want to play something that's fun. So I elected not to play this deck in Deck Devastators. The other deck I tested, or the other three decks I tested, the first one is this Banisher Stun deck. I think this deck is very good. I think Defissure and DD Survivor are insane cards. They're both very good into the metagame. The issue with this deck is it's very threat light. So your opponent can sort of just, you know, kill your one dude and then beat you to death with anything, really. 
There's only 13 cards that can win you the game, more or less 14 if you count Rhoda, kind of. Uh, other than that, you have very low monster count, more or less, and you do struggle with monster removal if your opponent's able to kill DD Survivor and keep it dead with something like Royal Oppression. So this deck does struggle with uh, low monster count, low threat count. I need to address that in future iterations of it, but in testing, it did pretty well. In testing, it did pretty well. The biggest weakness of this is the low monster count. I think this is a solid deck. I think if you're going to play this deck in the future, uh, feel free to use this as a starting point. I think it's very good. I think it's much better than Macro Monarchs. Oftentimes, DD Warrior Lady is doing everything the Monarch is doing, but better. Oftentimes, Banisher is doing the same thing Caius is doing, but better. And I think Doom Caliber Knight, Cyber Dragon, these are just better cards. They're more fast, and they allow you to, like, you know, keep up the pressure with D DD Survivor and Compound Threats, basically. Have more monsters in play and attack at the same time. It's, it's a little bit more aggressive than the Monarch decks. I feel like the Monarch decks, they're they're a little bit combo-oriented. If you draw Soul Exchange or Battle Fader and don't draw Monarch or vice versa, you're like trying to piece together all these combos with DD Scout Plane and whatnot, and it just felt really not resilient in the testing, so I, I cut all of the Monarchs basically from the deck. You could have like one Caius in here maybe as an additional threat, but I think zero Monarchs is probably correct. And then the third deck I tested a lot was actually Gladiator Beasts. I did a video with it recently. This deck did amazing in testing. It's probably the deck I should have played in this event, but uh, again, like I said, when I'm not having fun playing this game, it feels a lot like a chore. I'm going to talk about this list a little bit before I get into the deck that I actually played. Uh, the list is super cool. It's only Gladiator Beast monsters for normal summons. Basically, every normal summon you have is going to turn on your chariots. That's the theory. I think that is where you want to be if you're playing Glads. I think also there are a few cards that are, you know, high upside in Glads, but a little bit high variance, which is the Prisma Stratos and... Heavy Storm, as well as Defissure. I think these few cards are very great in certain matchups and in certain situations. That's why I have them in the sideboard. So you can bring them in in the matchups where they really shine. You don't really want them in every matchup, so I have them sided out for now. And I think this deck is very good when it has a lot of back row. In this deck, we're playing 18, 19 back row if you count Space Typhoon and Dust Tornado as well. Um, and that just makes your Heavy Storm dead pretty frequently. So I don't think it's, it's a good card to main deck in this deck in this climate. And then, of course, the deck I did decide to play today was uh, Chat Burn, <laughs> which is which is a deck that you guys invented. My chat. My live chat. This deck is cursed. This deck is incredibly cursed. But I also think this deck is very good. I think this deck is nice. I think it's very, very nice. It has a really weirdly strong game plan of Flip Hamster and then Sack for Caius. You know? Weirdly strong. This is the day one, the day one shit. But instead of, like the quick draw decks where you're getting boned by oppression, right? You're getting boned by like interaction, killing your synchro monsters and whatnot. You deal that first like 3,400 points of damage, that first 3,500 or whatever. And then for the rest of the game, you just burn your opponent out. You put them in a position where they're at a lower life total and then they're forced to play in a certain way, which makes it so that your cards like Honest and your cards like Dimension Wall and Magic Cylinder and Ceasefire like are incredibly punishing, incredibly punishing. There are a few changes I would make to this deck moving forward after the tournament. Mm. In hindsight, I would probably cut Dark Armed and Secret Burial, or not Secret Burial, Secret Burial, Secret Burial, that's funny. Uh, I might cut the Mobius as well. Mobius is good, Mobius is good. It gives you an extra out to the main deck decree, which you'll see comes up in the tournament, unfortunately. Uh, but Dark Arms and Secret Barrel are a little bit inconsistent. I do want a nether chainable burn spell, but I don't know if Secret Barrel is the right way to approach this deck. I think moving forward, what I'm going to try to do with this deck is maximize the hamsters and then play more of that game plan, like a little bit more hamster Ryko, and then have like Injection Fairy Lily and like some crazy beaters to try and like get in that early points of damage. Maybe a multiple Sorokos, maybe not. I'm not sure. The main deck Sirocco is for the Blackwing and the Bayou matchups as a way to get in extra points of damage. Think of this deck as a burn deck, basically, because that's what it is. Every card you play should be equating you to points of damage. If the card you're playing is not equating you to points of damage, then it's not serving its purpose, more or less. It's not, it's not getting you where you want it to be. In the sideboard, oh, excuse me, excuse me. There are a few cards I would change. One of the cards I would change is I would actually cut the... Dimension Wall? Maybe? I'm not sure which of these cards I would cut. I'm not sure. But I want to get a second Electric Virus in here. What I was thinking is I would actually move the Mystical Space Typhoon to the main, 
because th this deck does struggle playing in a back row with without enough like Raikos. I think I need to add another Raiko, basically. I think I need to add another Raiko and another Hamster and play something like that and play like a mix up like set monster game and then have yeah I'm, I'm thinking about this in real time right now guys this, this is this is all conceptual i do want a second electric virus though this is a card that i do want to add to the side in any case this is the this is the list i played in today's tournament it did pretty well for me i was i was very happy with the way it performed even though i did terribly in the tournament uh i'm, I'm very happy with the way the deck drew i think i think the deck is strong and i'm excited to show you guys the matches let's go ahead and get into that before i start getting in this deck building rabbit hole shit <laughs> okay first game is against albi um I get to go second because I lose rock, paper, scissors. Because why would I ever win rock, paper, scissors? Thankfully, this hand is pretty good going second. I have Cyber Dragon, I have Honest, I have Death Koala, Gores, and Magic Cylinder. All of these cards, these five cards right here, could very easily equate to 8,000 points of damage alone. This is why I love this deck. If you look at the deck list, the cards are very high impact burn spells. Cyber Dragon, if this ever gets a direct attack, that's 2,100 points. If Death Koala ever hits four more cards, that's easily 1600 and then if it attacks directly it's 2500 or 2700 my bad uh other cards caius this is easily 3400 points of damage on its own injection fairy lily 3400 points on its own morphing jar that could easily equate to you know 4000 points of damage directly thunder king chaos sorcerer if you think about all of these cards they all equate to 2000 points of damage so you really only need to resolve four of your cards to win the game unlike chain burn where I felt like I needed to resolve eight of my cards to win the game because everything was dealing like 800 to 1200 points of damage. This deck, everything feels like it's dealing two to 3000 points of damage. So you really only need to get in three hits. In the future, um, I'm going to try to play more cards that help me get in those hits. I think I'm going to try to play Compulsory Evacuation Device, which is a card that, um, what was I talking about? That Deleted User put me onto. He was talking about this deck a little bit with me after the tournament, and he put me on to Compulsory Evacuation Advice. I think that's a really good inclusion. There are a few other cards that I'm going to try out with this deck moving forward, but basically that's the theory behind the deck, is you're trying to get 2,000 points of damage and resolve four cards out of out of your starting six or whatever. They pick up Sirocco, which is really unfortunate for us. The fact that this is their sixth draw means that they're going to play passively for their next turn and not special their Boras this turn. So, or normal their Boras this turn either. Uh... That's ju that just fucking sucks for us. That just fucking sucks for us. I mean, if you look at our hand, it's nice because we have Descoala, which means that Descoala potentially will hit for a lot of damage, but it just sucks. It just sucks because that means we can't get our Cyber Dragon down. That means our Cyber Dragon's not dealing the damage that it needs to deal. That means we're not getting the position we need to be in. And we pick up Secret Barrel. Another reason I don't like Secret Barrel in this deck, and I'm thinking about cutting it, is, again, I want every single card in this deck to be dealing 2,000 plus damage, or at least equating to that in some way initiating a position where we can deal that 2000 plus damage secret barrel and ceasefire are the two cards that mm, more often than not are not going to be dealing that much damage ceasefire though at least has the upside of being able to kill rikos so i can use ceasefire as a way to kill flip effects and deal additional chip damage it's kind of like a second knock that also burns whereas secret barrel doesn't even really do that so it's a card that i'm definitely considering cutting uh, moving forward and it's definitely pretty weak in this hand here as you can see i just set the desk koala i don't want to set anything and turn on their mystical space typhoons i don't want to turn on a set heavy storm i just want them to keep as many cards in their hand as possible uh, for this desk koala to resolve and unfortunately for us they top deck main deck deck devastation virus which is really good against this deck it's just really good against this deck because a lot of these cards that i'm playing the way they deal 2,000 points of damage is because the is if the opponent doesn't know about them is if I have that surprise factor. This is another reason why I wanted to play this deck, is it has that X factor, it has that surprise factor that something like fairies wouldn't have had. And to be fair, like main deck deck dev probably would have fucking destroyed a fairy deck here too. So I I mean like the pre was real. The pre was real. People were were definitely trying to hate out fairies in this tournament and and it showed. I, I saw it in a few other deck lists that I was watching um, in the other games after after I was knocked out of the tournament. But um yeah. In any case they just go for summon Sirocco set deck dev which uh, is is an interesting move. It's an interesting move. They elect not to go for the double special Bora pump attack over. They elect not to special the Boras in general. They just, you know, Sirocco set deck dev pass, which is interesting. Uh, it ends up working out for them because we have Cyber Dragon and them not specialing the Bora means we won't get to special our Cyber Dragon. But unfortunately, once this deck dev resolves, it kills five cards. <laughs> so there's that. Not only does it kill the Honest and the Death Koala, 
but it kills the two cyber dragons by not having a monster in play. It kills the gores because now they know about it. It kills the magic cylinder because now they know about it. And the secret barrel is also significantly worse now that they're down two cards as well. So it pretty much just wins the game. It's like a free roll uh, hand loop kind of situation here for us, which is very unfortunate. It's also unfortunate too because the opponent proceeds to play the game pretty poorly from this point. Uh, it proceeds to make a lot of mistakes, but it doesn't even fucking matter because we got cheesed by a card that's just very good against our deck. Normal's the Shura, special's one Bora, probably should have special both, actually just a mistake not to. Attacks with the Bora, um, if you have the second Bora in play here, you can attack with the second Bora, it's just free 1700 points of damage. Sets the Book of Moon, and then he knows we don't have Heavy Storm, so he just plays both his back row. We don't top deck Heavy Storm, we top deck Dimension Wall, another card that's not great for the opponent, or for us, now that the opponent knows about it. I could set Dimension Wall and set Magic Cylinder here, but then I risk getting M Phase Icarus, and then I also risk not playing my Cyber Dragons accurately. I special summon the first Cyber Dragon, and he bottomlesses it. This is a misplay from the opponent. He should have booked the first Cyber Dragon on the attack. He should have just let this happen. He knows my whole hand. So he knows that I can't actually summon the second Cyber Dragon. Here he's giving me an opportunity to summon the second Cyber Dragon, which I don't I don't understand why you would do that. You would just book the first one, save your bottomless for something that actually matters, for a turn that actually matters. You know what I mean? Like, represent more, represent an Icarus attack. It's, it's just a misuse of his resources. He's allowing me to actually play the cards that he knows. And uh, yeah, he just he just makes this misplay here. I special the second one, I attack, he books. I'm forced to set Cylinder and hope that he misplays attacking the Shura first. <coughs> Pardon me. Otherwise I just fucking lose, more or less. Uh, he picks up another Sirocco, which is not the best card here. He does special summon the second Bora now. Probably should have done it last turn, would have gotten the extra 1700 in. He does misplay again, attacking with the Shura, a magic cylinder, the Shura here. He attacks the side row with that, we take 100, and then he does attack directly, triggering our Gores. Which basically tells me he has Kalut, but I have to proc it. I pick up Sangin, which gets discarded to DDV. So, uh, deck dev pretty much killed our entire hand this game. I mean, he knew about everything, there was really nothing I could do differently. The only thing I could have maybe done differently is, like, not drop Gores, but then what am I supposed to do? Hope this Dimension Wall saves me because it's not going to if he has any other monster Dimension Wall alone isn't enough to save me from 4500 so I attack into the Kalut and then I just fucking lose because I'm dead on the way back so I pass or I go to game two game two is an interesting one I have a bunch of different decisions which I think I could have played a little bit differently uh, I'm not quite sure though it, obviously hindsight is 2020 but in the moment you're thinking about a lot of different things so I'm not really sure I go ahead and lead on Hamster and Cylinder. I do want to set Cylinder because if he has summoned Sirocco on the first turn of the game, I want to get that 2,000 points out of my Cylinder. Basically, that's it. I want 2,000 points from the Cylinder. I want 2,000 points from this Caius, or 3,000 points from this Caius. And then I want 3,000 points from the Fairy Lily, and that's going to be my game plan, basically. Unfortunately for us, he just sets uh, Icarus and Seven Tools and passes the turn. Seven Tools is an interesting one in this matchup. I don't think it's good, but I don't think it's that bad either, specifically because, yes, it does trade one for one with a Burn Spell, which would be a minus one anyway, but it also saves you a thousand life points, which can matter, and it does end up mattering in this game, as you'll see. I go ahead and flip the hamster. I have a couple of options here. I could get another Death Koala, or I could get my Raikou. I like to get Raikou here. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. <coughs> I was thinking I would need to pop his back row in order to get in the injection fairy lily hits. I think that was my my thought process here. I go ahead and get Raikou, and then I don't Caius main phase one, which if I had thought about things a little bit more, I probably should have Caius main phase one. If you look at my hand, it's four cards I get hit by deck dev, and then the two monsters in play also get hit by deck dev. If one of these set cards is a deck dev and he's setting up for it with Sirocco or a Kalut turn, then I absolutely need to 50-50 and try and hit it now or else I just fucking lose. So I should have probably sacked the Nimble Mega Hamster for Caius and banished one of his back row blinds. Instead, I elect to go for a more passive play, which is set Desk Koala. Um, but in hindsight, I really should have Caius just because of the risk of the deck devastation virus is so high. I think that's, that's something I should have considered more uh, <coughs> from this position and while it does sacrifice a little bit of chip damage that I can get out of this nimble mega hamster and it sacrifices potential burn I can get from the Caius it does you know take a stab out of back row potentially get me out of the situation 
it's pretty bad into bottomless trap hole to I don't know. It was a questionable situation. It was a questionable situation. In hindsight, I probably should have risked it just because the threat of deck dev is so high. If deck dev ever resolves, I just lose this game because I have six targets for it. So I I needed to do it, but in the moment I thought des set desk wallet was better. I could have also summoned Injection Fairy Lily and attacked with both, tried to get in my 3400 with the Fairy Lily then, which could have been something I wanted to do. It could have been. However, that being the case, I would have lost the game if I had done that. So again, in hindsight, it's kind of hard to know uh, if I should have gone for it or not. Goes ahead and allures, finds Shura and Book of Moon, banishes the Shura and elects to go for something very aggressive, which makes sense because he has seven tools to make sure this play walks. He goes Whirlwind, Double Bora, off the Sirocco. Here I have an interesting decision. Mm. He pumps the Bora, attacks, right? Of course I'm in a cylinder because I'm like, you know, this is the best time to cylinder. And of course he's gonna seven tools because he fucking has to or else he loses the game. He attacks the Raikou, I take 5,300, and now this is where the real tricky decision comes in. What do you destroy here? What do you destroy? My mind says I should destroy the back row, because if it's Icarus attack, I lose, more or less. I can't win the game. I get a drop Trag, which is nice here as well, and Trag can help me clear all of his monsters provided he doesn't have a Kalu already. However, however, if I pop the Sirocco, I can Caius clear one of the Boras, and then I can use the guy, the Trigodia, to attack the other Bora, and basically clear his whole board without Kalu if the back row isn't Icarus attack. I do end up going for the back row, and it is Icarus attack, and it ends up being the right, you know, play in hindsight, but I'm not sure if that's the best target there. It's either target target the Icarus attack or target Bora or Sirocco. There's a chance it's target Bora too, just to remove the piercers, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is a this is a tricky situation. This is a tricky situation. I, I'm not sure. On our turn, we top deck Dimension Wall, which is not great when you have the board, basically, but maybe it can help us get the last few points of damage in if we're able to get in <clears throat> basically that extra 3,000 here that we need. I go ahead and sack for Caius. I target the Sirocco. I need to clear that so he can't pump over my Desqualo with his Boras. I switch the Trigodia to attack. I attack one of them. He uses the Kalute here because he needs to Book of Moon the Caius in order to deal with it. He uses the Kalute on the Trigodia. We lose the Trigodia. We lose some life points. He books the Caius, and we're getting dangerously low. We set the Dimension Wall, and unfortunately we die if he top decks Kalute here. We just die. He goes ahead and draws. It's Solemn Judgment, which is another card that's pretty fucking good here. I'm going to be real. We take 700 over the Pierce. He attacks into the Set Monster. He takes 500 damage here. So he drops to... Uh, he drops to... 4,400. Which is... Is a spot we can kill him from. It is a spot we can kill him from. If we find a certain set of cards. And one of those cards is Caius the Shadow Monarch. Now I have a couple of options here. I have a couple of options. I can set Morphing Jar... Use the Dimension Wall to protect myself from the Pierce damage, and then hope to draw into 4,400 points of burn. It would actually be 3,300 because the Dimension Wall would deal 1,100. So I'd hope to draw into 1,100 points of burn, basically. Or not 1,100, uh, 3,300 points of burn. Pardon me, I had to clear my throat. Um, alternatively, alternatively, I could sack for Caius right now. If the back row is bottomless trap hole, we don't just lose. If the back row is Book of Moon, we don't just lose. If the back row is Mirror Force, we don't just lose. If the back row is Deep Prison, we don't just lose. However, we do just lose if he top decks a monster. That being said, most monsters kill us off the top regardless if we set Jar because he'll be able to go for Whirlwind and go for a Bionic turn, basically. Blizzy kills us. Most monsters kill us. So I basically need to hope he top decks a back row next turn. If the back row's a bluff, let's say something like Black Whirlwind or Allure of Darkness or something like that. Oh, he's already used Allure, but let's say it's another seven tools or something. 
Or maybe it's like a Starlight Road. Who knows? Who knows what this guy's playing? I don't know what he's playing. If it's a bluff, Kaius here clears the whole board and stabilizes, which is great. So I'm, I'm going to take the high upside play here, which is sack for Kaius. And we are going to lose to Solemn Judgment, like immediately, because, I mean, that's it's broken Solemn, and he top-decked it when he needed to, which is unfortunate. Uh, and the, the match ended kind of unfortunately. It's kind of sad, really, because I, I feel like I played this game correctly. I, I feel like I played it accurately, but uh, it didn't end up mattering. It didn't end up mattering because he had he had Solemn Judgment, so not really much you can do there. He had the seven tools on the turn where it mattered for the Magic Cylinder. He had the Whirlwind for the extra search. He had what he needed to have uh, in terms of like pieces of interaction when he needed to have them, and we never really had a way to get this Injection Fairy Lily to deal that extra few points of burn that we needed it to deal. You see the opponent died at 2200. Mm, they would have been at 4400 technically. If the Injection Fairy Lily had connected maybe on that one turn, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This might have been a different game. I'm not sure. I, I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what uh, what to think uh, about this game. I need to I need to reflect on it a little bit more. But this is the game that knocked me into losers. Losers round one. I play against Vados, who's playing Norlaris. Norlaris Dragons, which is a deck I think I think takes a little bit more skill than people give credit. Uh, it's not just as helmet as people think it is. I start off with a T set. I have Hamster Caius, which is the best start this deck can have. That's another reason I'm thinking about going up to three Hamster in this deck, just because it. It's so good at dealing damage. Hamster basically guarantees you a Koala Burn. He goes for Cold Wave round one, or not round one, uh, turn one, which I don't agree with. I think he should have upstarted first. I think he should have tried to get his draw engine online. Cold Waving here, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You definitely want to Cold Wave the turn you go for the Norlaris, basically, once you get the draw engine online. Or once you find Phantom of Chaos, you can go for Cold Wave Norlaris pretty easily because you have Greffer, so... Uh, I think I think going for Upstar Goblin here is, is a little bit better than Cold Wave. We chain the Secret Barrel because obviously we don't want it to get popped by like a Lila or anything. We deal the 1200. He goes ahead and summons Greffer, activates it. Now this is where the information actually comes into play that we are playing Burn. He gets a little bit aggressive because he thinks, oh, I must be playing Chain Burn. And so he can go for a Bryonic while I'm under Cold Wave, try to lock me out of the game and aggro me that way. So he stacks for Plague. Summons Bryonic, pitches Wyvern, bounces my monster. If I was him, I probably would have pitched the Foolish Burial, so that next turn you could have summoned the Wyvern and threatened even more damage. But as it stands, um, he pitches the Wyvern and then attacks me for 2300. Which, unfortunately for him, we have the one burn out to Bryonic in the main deck, which is, or not main deck, that gets under Cold Wave. That's what I'm saying. It's in the main deck that gets under Cold Wave, which is Injection Fairy Lily. So we're able to attack over Bryonic, and now he's just in a really bad spot because our deck is. It's not like Chain Burn, where when you're under Cold Wave, you can't play the game. We have a lot of really powerful monster effects that actually do pretty well under Cold Wave. I want to comment a little bit on how I didn't Allure of Darkness on the first turn of the game. I wanted to keep my Kaius because uh, I think Hamster Kaius is, is such high upside, and Allure will be live later on, so I'm not really worried about it. He picks up Upstart, he activates it, which is super huge for us because that gives us a full extra activation of this Injection Fairy Lily. So... Uh, Injection Fairly, pretty good against decks that are playing Upstart Goblin. Just having five activations of this as opposed to like four or being able to activate this once for free is just, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. Picks up Traden, has to pass the turn. Again, if he had upstarted, he would have hit Traden. Well, I guess you can't really know that because he sent the plague off Greffer, so. But the chances of him hitting Traden, you know, it, it was there. It was there. We pick up another Dark, so we're able to allure away. And we do actually get another hit in with this Injection Fairy Lily, which is fucking phenomenal. We're able to deal uh, 20 or 3,400 points of damage. At this point, he's pretty much dead to anything. I can just set Hamster, set my three back row, and pass. He picks up Upstart. He's able to find the Phantom of Chaos, which will let him Norlaris, but it puts him down to 1,300, which is a dangerous place to be. Dangerous place to be for sure. Goes ahead and finds Dark Horus. We top deck Cyber Dragon. A little awkward. A little awkward. If we had hit just about any monster besides specifically Dusk Koala, we would have won the game, but unfortunately we hit Cyber Dragon. He picks up Dark Creator. He only has two darks, so he's forced to pass. We pick up Book of Moon, which we have to set. Pass. He picks up Dark Armed Dragon. He has to pass. We pick up Morphing Jar, and here I have a few plays. I could set Morphing Jar, hope to go for like a big play next turn, or I could summon Morphing Jar and go for the two-turn clock. I like to set Morphing Jar because I am scared a little bit of Gores, and I don't want to like... Yeah, I don't want to play into Gores, basically. 
I don't want to play into Gores and then just not have a way to deal the last few points of damage. So I just go ahead and set Morphing Jar. I'm like, with five cards, I'll probably be able to find it. Here he makes the biggest misplay of the game, which is he wrote us for Greffer. And then he normal summons Greffer, <laughs> which is a huge mistake. He should have discarded Dark Horus to special summon the Greffer, and then special summon Dark Arm Dragon. That would have forced our Book of Moon, and then we would have special summoned Cyber Dragon. We would have attacked over the Dark Armed, but it would have been a totally different game where he's totally stabilized as opposed to this game where he's just kind of dead lost. He pitches Sense Necro Gardener, trying to set up for a Dark Arm next turn, but he could have pitched the Dark Horus and special summoned the Dark Arm this turn, which is uh, something he should have considered. He attacks in the Morphing Jar. We do book the Dark Greffer because I want to not give him a chance to utilize his draws on his turn. On our turn, we top deck Dark Armed, can't play it, so we flip the jar, draw five new cards, and we draw five really good fucking cards. We also get to get rid of the Dark Armed, which is great. He finds Phantom of Chaos. He finds the Dark Creator. His hand is very strong. We are able to Caius his Greffer, put him down to 300. Unfortunately, neither of our cards are able to deal the last 300 through a Necrogard now, so we're forced to just set our Solemn and our Torrential and pass. He finds the Lure of Darkness. I think he goes for that. No, he doesn't. He just specials the Dark Creator. That makes sense, because both Phantom and Dark Creator are very good here. They could rep both potentially represent lethal. He activates the Dark Creator, special summons Dark Horus, and we are actually forced to Torrential here, unfortunately. The way the math works out, Dark Horus over Caius the Shadow Monarch is... Mm, 600 points. And then the Dark Creator directly is 23, which puts us to exactly 800, where we won't be able to brain control for game. Mm. He future fusions. I let that resolve. Unfortunately for us, he'll be able to bring back three red eyes in the M phase. He gets a little greedy, goes for game, summons the Phantom. I solemn it. He card destructions, and then we are able to find lethal in Death Koala. So it was a close game. It was a close game, all things considered. I mean, he made a couple of pretty critical errors. The big one was the turn with the Greffer. Uh, that was the biggest throw I've ever seen in my life, but. Hey, we're in loser's bracket for a reason, right? I win game one off a of Death Koala direct attack, and you guys can kind of see the potential of this deck, right? You can kind of see how this deck, it deals damage really quickly, and it's able to close out games with, like, a, the little bit of reach that it does have. Game two, I have Electric Virus and Magic Cylinder. Both of these are going to equate to at least, like, 2,500 points of damage, so I'm dealing 5,000. As long as I can get the first 3,000 in, I should be good to go. He goes for Allure. Finds kind of a brick hand. He Gold Sarks for Dad. Goes ahead and sets the Plague. If I was him, I might have considered setting Wyvern, but it's neither here nor there. I go ahead and summon the Sangin, attack over the Plague, set the Cylinder in the bottomless and pass. He finds Future Fusion, which is huge. Goes ahead and activates it. I let it resolve. Uh, he reveals a little bit of information by sending only one Wyvern here. Uh, Normal summons the Red-Eyes Wyvern instead of electing to bring back red med in the M phase. And here's where I have a really tricky decision. Here's my really tricky decision. I can let Red Eyes Wyvern attack over Sangin. If I let that happen, then I go get Injection Fairy Lily. Next turn, I can Electric Virus, take the Red Eyes Wyvern, summon the Injection Fairy Lily, attack directly for 5200 put him to exactly 2800, and then have Magic Cylinder to potentially kill him if he ever attacks me with a Red-Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. However, I want to go for the damage up front, I think, a little bit more. So my idea is that I'm probably going to Magic Cylinder this Wyvern, take it with Electric Virus, sacrifice my Sangin, go search... A potentially an honest or an injection fairy lily or a way to get the last few points of damage for Caius. Attack for the next 4,200 points of damage, dealing 6,000 total and putting him down to 2,000 and then having injection fairy lily plus whatever top decks I have to get the last um, few points of burn. If I had a second electric virus in my sideboard, like I said, I would want to, I'd be able to search it here with Sangin, but unfortunately we only have the one. So we're going to go for this. Um, this line, I think this line is a little bit better. It plays a little bit better over like top deck cold wave, top deck heavy storm, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to know for sure what's best, but fortunately for us, we do just top deck injection fairy lily. We're able to normal summon that and then use electric virus to go for exact game. And you can see the burst potential of this deck is kind of ridiculous. And able to deal like 6,000 points of damage very, very easily, provided you've gotten in that magic cylinder hit or that whatever else hit in 
the um, in the meantime before you go for this this big push turn. So I don't know. I don't know. Interesting game. Interesting thought processes from both players in both of these matches. I think I think this matchup's probably really favored for the burn deck because the dragon deck doesn't play a lot of defense and a lot of their stuff requires paying life points. Like Norlaris requires paying a thousand life points, which can be <clears throat> make or break between them winning or losing the game. And then on top of that, they have Upstart Goblins, which power up our Injection Fairy Lily, which is an insane card against the stack because it attacks over everything. So I'm one and one. I'm going into round three against Extremo. I scouted his match before this. He was playing against Phil. In game one against Phil, I saw he had multiple main deck Royal Decree. And I also saw that he had one main deck Threatening Roar. So for this game, I'm thinking, okay, Extremo probably has main deck Royal Decree and one Threatening Roar. You can't really find that much space for trap cards. Oh, I also saw one main deck Beckoning Light in his match against Phil. So you can't really find that many space for trap cards, right? In Light Sworn. You can't really find like more than four slots usually. Usually. Usually you can't find more than four slots. And that influences one of the plays I make in this game. You guys will see. We go ahead and win the Rock, Paper, Scissors, thankfully. Very lucky since this is an elimination round. And our hand is actually fucking crazy. We have Desk Koala. We have Brain Sidra Injection Fairy Lily. So if Desk Koala is able to deal 2,000, Brain Sidra Injection Fairy Lily is a game shot. We set the Desk Koala. In his hand, he does have a Threatening Roar. He does have a Trigodia. So he has ways to stop our game shot, basically. He summons Eren. He attacks into our monster, and we get in our 2,000, which is actually exactly what we wanted the Desk Koala to do. The Desk Koala serves its role here. It dealt the 2,000. Desk Koala gets shuffled back. He sets the Threatening Roar, and face he mills. Now, this mill is everything. This mill is everything, because I see the one Threatening Roar milled. And I'm thinking to myself, he has multiple main deck decree. He has at least one Threatening Roar and at least one Beckoning Light. What are the chances the back row is a Mirror Force or another Threatening Roar? I think very low. I think there's a higher chance that his back row is Royal Decree. Obviously, I don't know about the Trag, and there's nothing I can really do about Trigodia other than play into it, but that's the nature of hand traps in general. I decide that there's no shot this guy's main decking multiple Threatening Roar and multiple Decree. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I just go for game, a special side ride, normal injection, I brain his monster, and uh, he is playing multiple Threatening Roar in his deck, so we fucking lose. <laughs> of course, because why would you... Why would you play main deck to create except for with with a ton of different ton of different trap cards alongside it yep let me go to the next game that was uh that was an unfortunate one it's just an unfortunate one for us game two <clears throat> we have puppet plant and yeah we took a gamble game one didn't pay off game two we have trag and this game is very interesting i start off with just set to squala set bottomless in case he has lila i keep the other traps in my hand because in the case he has Royal Decree, I don't really want to Solemn it, honestly. And I also don't really want to Solemn a Heavy Storm early on. I'd rather just have a strong Trag this game. That's my game plan, is to get damage out of the Trag. If I do Solemn a Royal Decree, how am I ever winning this game, right? Magic Cylinder and Dusk Koala aren't enough to go the distance against Light Sworn alone. Puppet Plant can do some work, but I need the Trag to get in some damage based off of the composition of my hand. So the only way for this, to, this hand to really work out is for Trag to um, resolve. He goes for Solar Recharge, mills some cards, and then here he goes for a very greedy play. <clears throat> he goes for Solar Recharge to try and mill Wolf. However, uh, he should Typhoon first since that's his game plan. He should Typhoon first since that's his game plan. He goes for Solar Recharge here, pitches Lila, draws two, mills two, and he does fucking mill the Wolf. So not only does he get lucky and mill the Wolf, but uh, he did misplay by not Typhooning first, and the Wolf gets uh, bottom list. So now his hand does fuck all. He sets three cards and passes the turn. We pick up Mega Hamster, which is a great draw here because opponent's really doing nothing, and it's allow us to compound our advantage a little bit. I flip Desk Koala, I burn for 1,200 here. So Desk Koala is going to be able to deal the 2,000 I needed it to deal, which is great. That's exactly what I wanted from this card. I set the Hamster, I pass the turn. Again, I want the Trigodia to be strong. He picks up another Celestia. He is playing three copies of Celestia on this deck. You'll, you'll see, it comes up later. I go ahead and pick up Chaos Sorcerer, and I'm like, okay, that could potentially be some damage. This... Hamster can get a Raikou, which can switch on my Chaos Sorcerer, since Koala plus Raikou gives me Light and Dark. And then, potentially, I can I can get that, that extra 2,000 points from the Hamster and the Koala this turn. 
So it'll be my first 4,000 points. And then Chaos Sorcerer plus Trag or Chaos Sorcerer plus Puppet Plant or Chaos Sorcerer plus Magic Cylinder can be the last 4,000 points. That's my game plan as of right now. I flip Nibble Mega Hamster. I go get Raikou. And I make I make actually a pretty big mistake this turn. Uh, I set the fucking Magic Cylinder, which I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have done. Uh, you'll see why. So I attack with both of these. I shouldn't have set Magic Cylinder alone. The reason is, if I set Magic Cylinder alone, I'm trying to bait for him to activate his Decree now. I know he's playing multiple copies of Decree. So I'm baiting for him to activate his Decree now to try and lock off his own Threatening Roars, to try and lock off his own Trap Cards. But if I was trying to bait a Decree, what I should have done was actually set both Trap Cards. If I just set one Trap Card, it only weakens my Trigodia. He can activate the Decree at his own leisure in response to my Trap Card if it ever gets propped. So it's a total mistake to just set one Trap Card. It's also a total mistake in case one of the set cards is Space Typhoon or in case he has another Lila off the top or something like that. So setting the magic cylinder here, total mistake. I should either set nothing or set both cards. Uh, and then it does get Typhoon, which sucks. It does suck. I, I think that this actually comes up. I think it actually matters that I didn't set both here or I only set the one. I go ahead and pass the turn. He finds Solar Recharge off the top. The only thing that could have unbricked him from this hand was Solar Recharge off the top, and he does top deck it. It's his third one. So he gets incredibly lucky there. <clears throat> Mills Arcus, his fourth name, and Gareth. And then he also finds charge, so he's able to charge for Lumina. Doesn't mill his Lumina at any point in this game, so he's able to find that. Lumina, Pitch Plague, go into Gareth. There's a lot of consideration to different plays this turn from the opponent. He has access to Plague. He has access to <coughs> a lot of different ways to maybe interact with our Raikou, maybe interact with our board, but he just elects to pass the turn. He doesn't even attack over one of our monsters, which is crazy to me. I don't really understand why he, um, why he does that. He goes ahead and avarices, uh, shuffles back his four names, so he puts himself off of JD. He, he had enough cards to not put himself on four names, but uh, it's kind of a tell that he doesn't have JD as of right now. He picks up Aaron and Royal Decree, so the Royal Decree is found naturally after he finds the Threatening Roar. So Royal Decree not being set here is actually huge because it affects the course of the game. Imagine he had drawn Royal Decree before Threatening Roar. Imagine that. Just imagine that this card is Royal Decree and this card is Threatening Roar. We end up winning the game if this is Royal Decree and this is Threatening Roar, but alas, unfortunately that's not the case. Goes ahead and mills three with Lumina, doesn't even set his Decree, which is kind of wild. Uh, goes ahead and mills two with Gareth as well, and then draws one card. So he picks up a Lila, then on our turn, we pick up Mirror Force, not the best draw, because it's not going to equate to any damage at this point. We have a couple of options. So the first option is we flip Raikou. We pop the back row. If it's Decree, we win the game. Because we can pop a plant the Gareth or the Lumina, either one. We can double tribute for Trigodia. And then we can special summon Chaos Sorcerer and go for game, basically. That's what we can do. If if um if it is Decree. If it's not Decree, then and it is threatening roar, well, we lost our Raikou equity, and that sucks, but at least we can like you know, switch our guys to defense and then maybe go for it again next turn. They are low enough to where we can actually get a lethal shot with Chaos Sorcerer and Puppet Plant if they give us the opportunity. Maybe attacking in a Mirror Force, maybe attacking in a Judgment, who knows. So I flip the Raikou, I pop their card. They chain it, which sucks. I go ahead and try to attack, but I forget that he activated Threatening War. I go ahead and set my two trap cards after switching the monsters to defense and pass the turn. Here, he picks up Dust Tornado. So not only is he playing multiple Dust Tornado, multiple Decree, Space Typhoon, Heavy Storm, True Nade, <laughs> Multiple Threatening Roar. It's just a weird combination of cards that just happened to work out for him. Like, I could easily see this combination of cards not working out well for the opponent if they have him in the wrong order. But he just happened to have everything in the right order this game. He's able to Giant True Nade, activate Lumina, bring back Jane. He could have brought back a bunch of different stuff here. He could have brought back, like, well, I guess bring back Jane is whatever. Honestly, he could have brought back Gareth too which would have been fine. Gareth attacks for more and also presents potential draws in the M phase. Instead, he, you know, doesn't sacrifice the Gareth first for, first for Celestia. He sacrifices it after using the Lumina, which I think is just bad sequencing in general. I think you should just wait to use the Lumina until after you sacrifice the Gareth for, for Celestia if you were going to do this anyway. So he goes ahead and does it, mills four cards. It would have given him more information on what he might have wanted to get back as well. You see here he is playing multiple Jane. Uh, and he did leave in multiple Threatening Roar. He also has Cold Wave as well as Back Row Hate. 
So for game three, if that does come up, I have to keep in mind that he's got Dust Tornado, he's got Decrease, he's got Space Typhoon, he's got Storm, Trunate, Cold Wave, and Multiple Threatening War still in the deck. He goes ahead and stacks for Plague to make Android to try and keep himself alive. It also represents Honest to a degree. He attacks first with Magical Android, and I am able to drop Trigodia here to wall out his last two monsters. It is a bit of a tell that he doesn't have Honest, uh, by not attacking over the Trigodia here. So he just sets his two cards and passes the turn. On our turn, um, he mills his second JD as well, as well as uh, the Lila again, which he had average backed. On our turn, we pick up Honest, which is actually pretty big. The Honest can get us 2,100 points of burn or a little bit more. Uh, no, no, it can only get us 2,100 because it can, it can convert the Puppet Plant into damage. So we have a few options. We could use Trigodia, pitch Honest, steal the Jane. But Puppet Plant's not stealing anything else, right? We could use Puppet Plant, steal the Jane, attack over something with Honest, get in the 2,000 points of damage, and then Chaos Sorcerer the other monster, then get in direct with Trigodia for 1,200. Or we could just switch Trigodia and attack over the Android and try to play a slower game that way. It's tough. It's tough. Because at this point, if either of the back rows is Beckoning Light, I need to get him below JD range, more or less. And if either of the back rows is beckoning light, he'll be able to get back honest. So if I just go for if I just go for the attack with the Trigodia, then then I risk losing to Beckoning Light on the spot, more or less. Again, I watched his match against Phil in the first round of winners. Or second round of winners. I don't remember which round of winners it is. I know he has a beckoning light in his deck. I know he has at least one more decree. I know these this information about his deck. I'm going to make the play based off the information that I know, which is Puppet Plant the Jane, after, or Special to Chaos Sorcerer, Banish the Android, Puppet Plant the Jane, attack with Jane over Celestia using turn player priority with Honest. That way, I play around their beckoning on their own Honest, and then I attack directly with Trigodia for 1200. This puts them below the range they're able to activate JD. So at the very least, at the very least, on our turn, we're going to be able to set both our back... Uh, on their turn, let's say one of these is a Beckoning Light. They go for Beckoning Light here, right? If they want to go for Beckoning Light on their turn and you discard both draws, go for JD and Honest, I'll at least be able to Solemn their last back row, which is Royal Decree, I'm assuming. So I'm, I'm basically calculating that their last two back row is Beckoning Light and Royal Decree. On their turn, if they wait to use Beckoning Light till on their turn, then I can Solemn either the Beckoning Light or the Royal Decree, whatever, and I can basically um win the game from that point or if they go for beckoning light i could let it resolve and then just solemn the decree when they try to stop the mirror force basically so th that's my that's my general game plan i put them down to 800 the 600 points from magical android not really mattering too much here because again we deal damage in big chunks there's there's such a complex sequence here if this is beckoning decree but fact of the matter is it's not beckoning decree it's dust tornado royal decree so uh, he just has the outs for everything he needs to have the outs for, which is uh, Dust Tornado and Decree. And there's actually um, there's no reason not to go for the Dust Tornado right now, because um, the Royal Decree would shut it off, so he might as well clear the card now. And then he does have the, of course, the last Celestia in his hand. He top decks Beckoning Light instead of drawing uh, whatever. So there's the Beckoning Light that we'd been playing around the whole game. And if that Dust Tornado had been a Beckoning Light, I think we actually would have won this game. Maybe. There's a chance. Ah, there is a chance. Not a great one, but there was a chance. Mm. He goes ahead and sacrifices for Celestia, pops the two dead cards, or not two dead cards, but two cards that matter, and then manages to mill his last two wolves in the uh, top six of his deck and is able to lethal us, which is really unfortunate. It's just really, really unfortunate because there's a chance we could have won this game. There are a lot of chances. And then I was like, you played like shit, LMFAO. Because there were some turns earlier on where he played really questionably. And also this configuration, double dust, double decree, double threatening roar, with beckoning light. Like, do you do you not expect this to happen to you? Like, do you not expect your decree to shut off your own traps? Am I, am I missing something here? Like, Celestia can't pop your own back row. Lila can't pop your own back row. Sure, JD can, but you don't have the best ways of clearing your own decrees for your own traps. So... I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it's a I think it's a questionable configuration. It just happened to work out, and he just happened to draw the cards in the right order, 
and at the right time. And even though we played around everything we knew, it wasn't quite enough to get in the last 800 points of damage with the burn deck, and that was the end of my tournament run. GG's to Extremo, GG's to all my opponents. I think they played, you know, they played all right. It was kind of what I expected from, like, tournament players. A little bit better than DB Random, but still making some misplays in the earlier round, especially once I got into loser's bracket. So, um, kind of what I expected. Just just a tough run. A tough run in general. I'm going to work on this deck more. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know what you guys uh, want to see in the future for me. I'm definitely going to be playing in more of these Deck Devastator events. I like the big tournament vibe. I want to do better in my next one. I have a pretty low bar to to uh, achieve higher than. One and two is not a good record. It's a very bad record. In all of my testing, none of my decks went below 50% uh, win rate. So uh, this is this is a subpar, subpar showing for me, particularly. And there were definitely some things I could have improved on, most notably my list, and then a few plays I maybe could have done differently in hindsight this tournament. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if you guys like this kind of video. And definitely show up for the next Deck Devastators event. It was a lot of fun to play in. And I think the people who are putting on the event really love the format and really love the game. So it's it's good to show them some support as well. You can catch, I think, the first part of the tournament stream on Carpath's channel. Go ahead and subscribe to him if you aren't already. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next vid. Peace out.